everybody. A good buddy of mine, his name's Kurt Nielsen, gave me these two Husqvarna 65 chainsaws. Neither one of them runs, haven't ran for years and years. And I thought to myself, you know what? Maybe we can make one chainsaw out of both of these, have a good working chainsaw by using all the best parts from each chainsaw and making it all into one. So we got a firewood cut and chainsaw here. This is gonna be so fun. Welcome back to Steve's Small Engine Saloon. See this one right here? Chain's coming off nice, just like it should. Bar chain off. Look at this one. <laughs> the chain is took completely seized in this bar. I can't get it out. This one clearly has not ran for a very, very long time. Holy crap, there we go. Woo! All right. I don't think I'm gonna be using that chain. Okay, before we just go crazy here and start pulling stuff apart, we have to do some preliminary checks. We're talking spark compression, that kind of stuff, just so we can see what we have. What, where, we're gonna, where are we gonna start? Which chainsaw are we gonna start with? Um, I wanna pull both these covers off, the, the cylinder covers and the carburetor covers, and, um, and then we'll go from there. Give me another sec. Okay, carburetor covers are off now, and then I realize on these old chainsaws, they kind of are different than the new style ones. Just to get the cylinder cover off the top right here, um, you have to take the side cover off that holds the bar and chain on, which we've already done, because there's this little pin right there, if you can see that. The side cover gets a little pin in there that holds this top cover on. Also on that side, there's a little pin on the starter that also helps hold that on as, and also, also the one in the top. So we have to take the starters off on these ones just to get that cylinder cover off. So uh, uh, give me another second, I'll pull the starters off. All right, both starters are off. That one feels pretty good. That one feels pretty good too. So I want to check the compression on both of these things with my compression tester, but that it has the starter on there and you put that on, on the compression tester on top and you have to pull it over really fast. I don't mean to sound like a wussy here, everybody, but uh, I fell on the ice. I, my feet slipped right out from underneath of me. I landed flat on my back, wham. I am still nursing some bruised ribs here or broken ribs, I don't know. Uh, I cannot pull the starter on this. I couldn't even start my leaf blower yesterday. Maybe on the next segment of this video, maybe I can get April to come out and uh, we'll check the compression on these things. Oh, honey, can you help me do a compression test? It's embarrassing, okay, but I can't do it. I'm spinning that flywheel. That's tight. See, that takes up that's tight that has some compression now we take this one right here and we do the same thing and look at this that clearly does not have as much compression as that one does i know a lot of you are saying pull the muffler off steve let's look at the pistons uh, through the exhaust port yes we are definitely going to do that I'm actually shocked that all four of these bolts coming out of the muffler are not seized. That makes me very happy. All right, there she comes. That muffler's off. I'm gonna keep that to that side. And I think, I, yep, that one's loose. Uh, nope, not tight. There we go. And that one's loose. Now we're going to look through these exhaust ports and see what kind of shape these pistons are in. Flashlight. 
This was the one that had the good compression on it, or the better compression at least. And uh, look at that. The, look at that. That is not bad for a 60-year-old chainsaw. Did I tell you guys this yet? These things are almost 60 years old. Yes, you heard that correctly. 60 years old. You know, I am amazed. Hey, this one only has one ring on it. See the difference there? That has one ring on it. This one has two piston rings on it. Well, that's interesting. So they're both in great shape. This one has better compression, has two rings on it. Maybe that's the reason. I'm gonna just mark these before I forget. I'm gonna mark this one right on top of the cylinder. Um, number one. This one's number two. So we don't forget which is which. So now, now that we have these things ripped down to this far, I realize now this is going to have to be a series. You know, episode one, part one, part two, that kind of thing. Because I'm not going to make everybody out there watch a four hour long video with getting this done beginning to end. We're going to do a series on this. So for today, we're going to do one more check. We're going to check the spark. And then we're going to really know what's going on here. Okay, it's grounded right there. Watch this. But it's beautiful. That's beautiful. Can't get better than that. You know what? I'm not even going to test that one. Because I don't care if that one has spark or not. This is the one we're starting with. It has a wicked good spark. And uh, that's what we're going to roll with today. So this one has great compression. I know I haven't tested it on the next episode. We're going to test that, hopefully, uh, so we can see exactly what it is because I'm curious. I know you're curious to see what the actual compression is. Is it like 90 or is it 120? I want to know, too. This one has spark. It has good compression. It has two rings on the piston. Everything looks good on this. The crank shaft, I can't wiggle any of this back and forth. It, it feels tight. It feels like a nice, smooth... Uh, chainsaw. I cannot wait to get one of these old chainsaws working so we, I can show you it cutting wood. This is going to be awesome. Uh, make sure that you're subscribed to my channel. Make sure that you have that bell notification put all the way onto the all so you'll get a notification and you, can, uh, you won't miss episode number two coming up where we're going to get into this more carburetor work, um, all that kind of stuff. Till the next time, Ladies and gentlemen, Steve out.